This is Marta Kristen, and you're listening to the FSF Podcast. The show where we try to use all five of our senses in every episode. But hey, if we're being honest, it's mostly our nonsense that shows up. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, which supports the Wage Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Red Shirt Crewman number 122. She'll know that when she puts on the red shirt and joins John, Maureen, Judy, Penny, Will, and Don on being lost in space, that she didn't leave her family destitute and without hope. Because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has her back. And what's left of the robot? Danger! Danger! All right, so guys, our guest today is an actress who not only hails from this great mitten state of Michigan that we are living in, but also has been entertaining audiences around the globe since the robot said danger, Will Robinson, on the original series run of Lost in Space. So guys, let's all have a big hand and a warm welcome for Marta Kristen to the FSF podcast. Welcome to the show, Marta. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Oh, we're excited. We had a chance to chat with you briefly at the Grand Rapids Comic Con uh, here in 2022. And uh, you were so kind and gracious and said, yes, uh, I would love to be on your show. And then we thought, boy, she doesn't know what she's getting into, but we're going to do this anyway. <laughs> I so. didn't, and I'm I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try to go easy on you. but uh, oh, Thank you. I appreciate that. No so, Howard Stern here. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're, we're not anywhere near that, but... Uh, we're a little I just more want to say one, one, one thing. I, I have a dog right at my feet here. Oh, now, she, great. We yeah, love she, dogs. Yeah, well, she's scrappy and she's noisy. She might she might just bark a little bit. <laughs> That's but, okay. Okay. It won't be the first dog. celebrity it's dog not, that has barked. Just as long as you know it's not me. <laughs> no, there's. we've had several dogs uh, make their camera debuts uh-uh. uh, <laughs> on our show, so it wouldn't be the first time, so it'll be all right. Thank you. Well, Marta, we talk with a lot of different artists about their backgrounds and and what got them into what they do for a career. Uh, But not everyone that we talk to is also from Michigan. Now, I understand that you were raised in and around the Detroit area. So I live on the west side of the state over by Lake Michigan. Nick's more in the middle of the state and actually closer to Detroit. Yeah, so it's the only state where we get to show off our hand as our map. I live here. Nick lives more over here. I'm here. I'm here. There you go. So I have to know, what are your fond memories of Michigan from growing up, and how did being a Midwestern Scandinavian help you move forward in your career? I love the fact that I was raised in Michigan. Um, we had five acres. My, my dad taught at Wayne State University, taught mm-hmm. philosophy there. My mother was a fourth grade school teacher uh, slash businesswoman. Um, it, it, it was just, it was a a childhood where I could play softball in the summers with bare feet running around and climbing trees. I was always an outdoor kid. My dad built us a huge slide slide between two big elm trees. And, um, uh, and, and I would play Sheena queen of the jungle and, um, uh, and I, and, and I'd set up my tent and, uh, you know, I'd spend most of the time camping out in my backyard, which was five acres. And um, it was just, uh, also, I loved horses. There was a, a, a barn not too far away, and I would clean the muck up and, and, and the horse's hooves uh, and, and so I could at least get a free ride at some point uh, during the week. And, um, I, you know, it was, a, it, it was, it was an interesting, um, it, interesting time in my life because I also loved acting. I was adopted when I was five from from Norway and, and came to Michigan, which was pretty close to, um, the weather was pretty close to what we had in Norway, not not mm-hmm. quite as cold as Norway, but, but close to it. And um, I, I, you know, I sort of, I, I didn't have this great divide of like when I moved to California and I said, oh my God, California, you know, <laughs> uh, apples and oranges, I guess, but uh, sure. yeah, really, really different. Um, but yeah, Michigan, Michigan, I started in theater there. My uh, my dad uh, and mom got me uh, into, um, into the Detroit, um, well, actually the Wayne State University Children's Theater. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, and also the Willoway Theater in, um, I think it was Bloomfield Hills. 
And uh, yeah. I was raised in Farmington. They they changed it to Farmington Hills, I guess, to make it sound fancier. But um, two I five. Think they three, added four, to it because I added, know it's over by about where I'm at, kind of. So. They added again. Um. It's, well, I know Bloomfield Hills still exist, but then like there's like a Farmington Hills, and I don't know. But it was, but it was Farmington, and I, I, I'm th I thought you said they, like it's Farmington Hills and uh, Beverly Hills combined with uh, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, Farmington. Farmington was a great place to grow up, and I have friends from there. Um, uh, it was really. It, it was an interesting childhood, especially because I'm of the theater that I did and dance, tap dancing and, and singing. And, and uh, I always would perform at the school. Uh, and, and that's pretty much what I did at the orphanage. Um, okay. uh, my, my, my parents told me that I got off the airplane walking like Charlie Chaplin. And, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. and I, it must have been. Uh, you know, as a child, you, you, you find a way to survive, and that was my survival technique. You know, just to make make them laugh, make, make people them laugh. laugh. Sure. Yeah. So, is that what you feel like kind of helped you get into the 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 mode of being an actress and and wanting to perform? Was 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 that bit during your childhood, or was there something else as you grew as you grew older and you were you know, was was there a television show or was there uh, another actress or somebody you watched that you wanted to emulate? Did that help as well? Or was or was it just the sense of I wanted to perform? A, a bit of both. Um, I, I loved performing. It took me out of my my head, uh, you know, because uh, as an orphan, you have scars, you know, I, I, sure. Uh, and and um, and it it helped me almost in a therapeutic way that I could get outside of myself and to be somebody else and to say someone else's words and and to fantasize about that and to have that you know to have the other life uh it sounds a little schizophrenic but but it, it wasn't it was it was it was a, a way to to communicate mm -hmm. uh, you know um to communicate my feelings through a character through someone else and it wouldn't be so painful and uh and it was allowable that that yeah. actually makes a lot of sense to me because in a, in a as close as i can relate to that so this is the third show that i have hosted so i hosted this one i hosted a sister show to this called pop culture addicts for a while with our co-host kathleen who's under the weather tonight but there was another show that i hosted by myself called focused on forward and i started with that after my daughter got out of the hospital and it was a way for me to kind of, it was an escape. It was a way for me, I, I would play the role of a podcast host to talk to other people and and kind of talk about their issues and problems and what they were doing to move forward in their lives uh, through all the issues and things that they had gone through. And so for me, it gave me that escape and ability to kind of disconnect from things that were going on in my own world for a little bit and focus on somebody else. So to some degree, I can kind of uh, relate, I feel like, to what you're saying there. How is she doing now? She's doing much better. Uh, we've been out of the hospital for three years, and um, there's some other issues, the, some, some secondary conditions that have set in from the Guillain-Barre syndrome that she has. But, uh, you know, she's a fighter, and uh, she's um, she's just as stubborn as I am. She is my mini-me. <laughs> so she's, uh, she's, she's doing her best to push through and work through it. Good. I'm glad. I'm very Thank glad. You. Yeah, it takes... It takes strength and courage mm -hmm. to to uh, go through an illness like that and and to and to um uh to realize the you know the the, the pain and the fear mm -hmm. of that Absolutely. yeah my husband had cancer and I, you know i i and we dealt with that and 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 mm -hmm. um, it was uh you know it's, it's hard and i i appreciate it i appreciate it i i'm She's in my prayers. Well, thank you very much. We'll accept those happily. Thank you. So. so, Marta, we love to hear stories. And one of the stories that we don't often get to hear are the behind the scenes moments, especially with like a show of like Lost in Space. Um, what was like one or two of your favorite moments, whether it be funny or heartfelt, that happened kind of behind the scenes, but on set? Oh gosh, there there's so many. 
there's so many. We would we would you know work long hours on Friday, especially because they could keep us late, uh, and um, we would start laughing so much. We would start giggling. You know, once it starts, you can't stop. And um, you know, all we had to do was take a look at somebody else. <laughs> we would just start laughing, laughing and laughing and laughing. So Erwin would have to come down and like, you know, the school teacher going, ah, yeah, <laughs> all right, all right, get it together, guys. Time is money, time is money. And, and you know, we all go, oh, yeah, and, you know, and, and he would like sort of stand on the sidelines. And, and he was the producer. That, that was his job. But, uh, oh, there were, there were other things like uh, Mark uh, um, injured his foot in, in one of the episodes, you know, uh -huh. He fell down and injured his foot, and he got a letter from some, what is it, photophil, whatever it is, who said how much she enjoyed, you know, or he enjoyed, you know, how how he, you know, expressed himself with so much pain about his foot, and is it all right now? And and and, and so we all got together and sent a letter saying, you know, we we. We really enjoyed your letter. It was quite a feat. And, and I mean, you know, and, uh, yeah, uh, it was. It was just. Uh, I mean, silly things like that. That 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 went on. Uh, the um, oh, uh, Jonathan every Friday would bring lollipops to the set, and that's sort of a well-known fact. And he would hand them out to the. Um, uh, out to the crew and everybody there, and um, they were Tootsie Rolls, and mm -hmm. so everybody probably had to go to the dentist because of him, but <laughs> multiple times because we'd all be, you know, biting into that Tootsie Roll and chewing away. Um, but I, you know, what was fun was to see how Jonathan worked the room. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, he was he was authentic. He wasn't being, you know, he didn't do it because uh, for any other reason than he, he, he wanted to show the, ca the, the crew that uh, how much he cared about them. And um, so, you know, uh, so every Friday night out came the Tootsie Rolls. And um, I thought Jonathan is teaching me a great lesson that every young actor should know. And that is that when you go on the set, you learn names of everyone and their family. And, and you learn, um, uh, uh, you know, about their jobs and what they do and you talk to them and, mm -hmm. and, and you sit on the set and you, and you watch everybody do their job. And, and, um, yeah, you know, that that's how directors are made. And, um, uh, it's, it's just it's a it's a it's a family if it's not a family if the set is full of you know anxiety and 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 mm. and, and turmoil you know you're not going to get a good product and um, but you, if if like I, I uh, I've heard I don't know whether it's apocryphal that George Clooney doesn't allow any kind of of uh, negativity on his set and if if there is then you know you go home and um, I, I like that. that that's, that's a good rule. Because like you're the rule. together, you know, 24-7 almost. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're, you know, um, uh, on, on um, uh, outside of the studio. Yeah, that's a good rule. I like that. And I'm pretty sure working on set, especially with um, the monkey. What was the monkey's name? Oh, Debbie. Debbie. That's Debbie. it. Yep. And was that the actual monkey's name, or was that the monkey's stage name? Oh, that, that's what we called her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and the poor, the poor thing. She had to wear. You know, she's a chimpanzee, mm -hmm. and chimpanzees are. Once they become an adult, they can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. And um, she bit Angela briefly, oh, no. and they pulled all her teeth. Oh, oh, Debbie, Debbie, <laughs> and uh, and, we, and we all felt so badly about that, especially Angela, Angela, because Angela said, "Wait a minute, you know, is that, is that, what what have I done?" And of course, it wasn't Angela. Uh, there's they're animals; they're unpredictable. And oh, yeah. um, but she had to wear that thing on her head, and then she had to, and they perfumed her so much. She wore diapers, and you know, mm. 
it was it but eventually after the show they 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 sent her down to San Diego to a um special chimpanzee place and nice <laughs> and she lived out her years there and it was uh, i think in the late well maybe early 2000s that that Billy sent me a um uh, uh, an email saying Debbie dead oh. and I Debbie's dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she, so she lived a good long life and a good oh, yeah. half life after that. Good. Like yeah. 40 years? Yeah, 50, yeah. 40. Yeah, 40, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Impressive. She, yeah. Yeah, Debbie, Debbie dead. <laughs> I, I did a show. I remember years ago, I did a show in Texas and I, I always ask people for their, you know, their um, name, and uh, so I can personalize the autograph. And um, and I, I, I said, well, what, what's your name? And and, and she goes, Deb. I said, excuse me. She said, Deb. I said, could you could you spell that? D e b b i e. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, oh Debbie, oh Debbie, oh my God. <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah. Those I, I love doing conventions. Conventions. Mm-hmm. I love the people. I love I love the people who come up and tell me how much we were a part of their childhood, and um, and 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 of course I love when they say, "Well, you were my first crush." <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shucks. laughs> thank you, thank you, and uh, yeah, and and. Did you see Galaxy Quest? Oh yes. I thought it, that was such a love letter to to these conventions. Yeah, and, <laughs> totally. And, yeah, and 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 uh, to space shows and uh, yeah. I, I, that's one of my favorite movies. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. You know, Marta, I, I think it's safe to say that you know, looking back on your experiences through Lost in Space and such, that we never really truly understand the impact of something. And while we're in the middle of doing it, it's sometimes that impact isn't truly recognized f- for some time yet down the road. And you're seeing that now with conventions and, and all these things. And I'm sure you've seen that for years. But when it comes to Lost in Space, the original series has held the attention of the public since its cancellation in 1968. People have been, you know, clamoring for it and excited about it. And, and it's stayed so popular that there's, a, you know, there was a, a new series that spawned on Netflix. And there was a movie adaptation on the 30th anniversary of the cancellation for the Lost in Space movie. Still didn't understand why Matt LeBlanc was in that, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> hey, he's in Friends. Wait a minute. <laughs> that's right. I kept waiting for him to, like, turn a corner and be like, how you doing? Anyway, um, so... <laughs> Why do you think that Lost in Space has stayed so popular with the with the pop culture world? Well, I think pop culture is the is 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 the the right word it, because it it really did um, uh, reign supreme in the very beginning of pop culture and on television, uh, especially of course when the second and third season went into color and and um the first season was rather dark it was real sci-fi it was a show about um you know family adventure uh, series uh, going out into uh you know, family going out into space and um i i i think the reason though that it that our show resonates and i don't think it was carried on into the other uh, to uh, you know the movie and, and the other series, it was the great um, caring that we had for each other. You mm-hmm. know, we we really we really tried to show um, a tenderness and uh, and a um, as, you know that we're. I mean, it, it wasn't overt, but it but there was that struggle that we we had for. Um, uh, you know, being out there with no one else, no, no, no friends around and surrounded by aliens, even though they were sort of, you know, it, 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 um, they weren't, you know, nowadays, of course, you've got CGI and everything has changed, but they were, you know, aliens that kids could love. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, and, and they would be scared. Kids love to be scared. I, you know, God, adults love to be scared. Uh, so, you know, that's why horror films do so well. And 
um, we're still waiting for the you know the hand to you know take you away um <laughs> uh, and 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 we have that element too in 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 our show but mostly i think underlying everything no matter how many monsters we had and how many how many issues how many blasts bomb you know how many you know explosions we had we cared about each other and uh, i talk to people now who come up to me at at conventions or, you know, uh, you know, my own just everyday life and say, loved Lost in Space. My family loved it. We sat around, we had a great time. I live in a great community. It's uh, uh, manufactured homes and uh, homes and, and we have a clubhouse. And when we just had a big get together, friend, Friendsgiving was called. Uh -huh. and, and, and people one after the other came up and said, no matter what age, um, came up and said, oh my gosh, Lost in Space was my favorite show and my kids are watching it or my grandkids are watching it now and uh, we get such a kick out of it. And But it's also very, it's very sweet and it's very kind most of the time. Mm -hmm. and, it's, it, and, and adults can watch it and say, and have a giggle and, <laughs> and uh, teenagers can roll their eyes and... <laughs> and um, uh, and, and and grandparents can watch the show with their with their grandkids and and not be afraid that something you know something nasty or something right. untoward was is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, I think that's an excellent answer. And I think I think for all those reasons are reasons why it's stuck around. It's it's had that ability to touch multiple generations all at the same time, and it's and it is something that people could watch together and that. I think that's a lot of what you know, we look at entertainment that's out and available today. That's kind of what some of the things are missing. That a lot of the things that are coming out are, you know, a more adult theme, more adult based shows. And that's great because I'm an adult uh, and none of my kids are, are of that younger age anymore. But it would be hard for me to to, to find it would be harder for me now, I think, to find shows like a Lost in Space where you could sit down as a family and watch it together and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And on, on prime time. Yeah, course, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were only three networks, so, you know, we, they didn't have much of a choice, uh, <laughs> and, you know. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I think that, that there's too much violence on television. There's too, you know, too much. It's it's like I'm done with it. I'm tired mm -hmm. of it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, shoot them up. Uh, you know, I'm tired of it. Where You know, give me a show that has some some real characters, some real you know, moral lesson, some something that I can take away with and, and feel good about. I mean, like this morning when when um, Greiner was was was, uh, you know, released from the Russian prison. I mean, I just cried and cried and cried because it because I was so relieved to find that there is some kind of, you know, that she was going to be happy, that she was going to, you know, be in that. Sure come yeah. back here to the great United States. And, and, and I, I just, I don't, I, it was hopeful. And, uh, you know, I think we, we just need, I, I know it sounds so cheesy and so out of date, but I, I just wish there were more shows. I, I'm, I'm not talking about life, lifetime. I mean, lifetime is fine, but, but I'm not talking about melodrama. I'm talking about real issues of of you know what that we human beings have and mm -hmm. you know let's you know rather than shoot them up let's let's deal with mm -hmm. other right. things no, i get that yeah I, I don't i don't think any something that's hopeful is ever out of date though i think that's something we always need yeah yeah i do too mm. i'm always hoping <laughs> I usually go back and watch hope, wish it, hoping i look okay hoping my hair is all right <laughs> no kidding that's why i wear a hat I don't spend that much time, believe me. But uh, I love, I love, um, love my uh, my girls and my. God, I'm going to sound strange, but I, I I just love being in this amazing neighborhood with people that. Um, mm -hmm. I, Vernon Wells is my neighbor, from Road Warrior. Oh, oh yeah. And, yeah. yeah, the bad guy. Well, he's mm -hmm. one of the nicest men ever. We've already done two movies together, and we're going to do two more. And, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's amazing. And his wife, Grace. And they're my neighbors. They live right next door. And then I have another one. I have a, a neighbor who is a sexologist. 
<laughs> who's been, who wrote books on Playboy bunnies. Okay. I have and and um and had her own show, her own TV show. Um and and it was a and in, behind me is a um a children's book writer. Mm -hmm. uh, an award-winning Deborah Lattimore, children's mm -hmm. book writer. So yeah, I'm surrounded by art, artistic people. That's awesome. That's cool. And hope oh you don't care about that, but <laughs> No, we're always glad to hear that kind of stuff because that's part of what makes you who you are. And, and it's it's also a continuation of your story and, and where you're at and what you're doing at this stage of your life. So it's always nice to hear that kind of stuff. Thank you. <laughs> so certainly Lost in Space was definitely a project that was close to your heart. Did you have any other projects that were maybe a little less known that were also close to your heart, but you would wish had a little more love to them? Well, I did a lot of theater, and um, I founded a theater company with a group, a small group of people, um, which was voted the best small theater company in Los Angeles by NPR, Ooh. and I was with them for quite a long time. Um, and then, um, and then, um, uh, I did a play called Wings, Arthur Coppett's Wings. Um, I was um, I was uh, uh, compared to the uh, uh, what is it that holds up the Notre Dame Cathedral and uh, <laughs> my performance? It's a 90 minute show, a, a pretty much a monologue and um, hmm. uh, a woman who has a stroke and was a wing, had been a wing walker. And um, that was uh, that was really quite a, a challenging, but exciting. And 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 um, uh, and and what I found I was able to, in, pre in preparing for the role, I was able to sit in um, with a group of people who had strokes, who had had a stroke uh, at, uh, at the uh, Daniel uh, uh, Freeman Hospital. And, um, and th they allowed me to sit in with them, which was very kind. And um, they, um, I found that they all had a great sense of courage. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what I found in this, this woman, great courage, courage to, to live, to get beyond her problems, and then to go softly and gently into that that good night. Nice, excellent. Okay. And now a word from our sponsor. Since 1982, Vital Signs and Graphics has been helping professionals with all their image, logo, and design needs. Perhaps you're looking for signs and banners, truck and trailer lettering business cards, brochures, or other image and marketing aids, Vital Signs and Graphics in-house design studio has you covered. From logos to apparel, start to finish, Vital Signs and Graphics has everything you need to look and feel professional. Call Rick at 231-652-3300. He'll get you noticed. Welcome back to the FSF Popcast. All right, so Marta, we also asked our 208,000 member Facebook group uh, if they had any questions for Marta Christian, and oh. our group member Jim Ross wanted to know the following. So Jim Ross, this is for you. He would like to know if Marta still has her spacesuit. No, no, and one of my costumes just sold for $70,000. Oh, wow. Yes. yes, I know. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, wow. My. All right. So let's let's take this question one step further from Jim's question. Are there sometimes we you know, there's souvenirs that people take home with them from set. Do you have any souvenirs from the set that you that you still hold on to? No, no, because we were supposed to go another year. I oh, mean, true. Yeah, yeah. It was in the books, we all I, I found out that we weren't um, renewed um, on the phone one day when I was just walking around the house and um and I was disappointed, of course, because I, I I had felt that my my space family was my kind of family, <laughs> and, uh, you know. And yeah. I had made, I had made friends, and June and Guy taught me Killer Scrabble, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, they were so wonderful, and so funny, and smart. Oh my God, they, <laughs> June, June is one of the smartest women I know. She. Uh, my mother was was brilliant, and June is equally brilliant and and informed and and um, 
Uh, I learned so much from her and including Killer's Gravel. All right, Jim Ross, I hope that answers your question for you. Well, what was the question again? I probably didn't answer it. No, you did. He wanted oh. to know if you still had your spacesuit. So oh, no, you, you that's said, right. No. Yeah, no. you said no. I just, so. I'm rambling here. That's okay. We like rambling. Rambling good, adds good. more detail. It's I like the spices notice, added to a meal. So I, I did notice you have, I think it's robot on I your do. shelf behind you. I do. This is my Christmas robot. <laughs> all I have. That's all, all I have. You know what I saw and I really want? Some Somebody came in and I signed a parrot. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, you know, figure, action figure. Okay. okay. From the Great Vegetable Rebellion. I thought that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Also, at one of the shows I did, the North, North, Northeast Comic Con, uh, Gary Summers uh, uh, show, they have a uh, costume um, um, contest. And mm -hmm. a guy came in, complete a six foot carrot. I, and it was perfect. It was perfect. Stanley Adams would be proud. And I, I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And I took pictures with him. I mean, uh, what dedication that was. And I couldn't quite figure out why he would choose that. But, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it was iconic. I mean, it's a completely iconic figure. The giant mm. carrot. I have to find that. So I noticed on IMDb a film coming into 2023 called Escape from Earth, in which you appear to reprise your role as Judy Robinson. What can you tell us about this movie and your role in it? Oh, you mean it's in the animation? I think so. Uh, you I think it's animated. So, there I was like, there was like really little about it. So I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> I don't. Other, I hope it's an animation one because I don't. Otherwise, I don't remember doing it. Um, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> that would be a problem. That would be a problem. You'd have to get the hook. Um, Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's just a wonderful animation uh, uh, by Tim. Oh, forgive me, his name. Another Tim. Um, uh, oh, I could look it up. Anyway, uh, it's it's an animation, uh, and Phil Hamilton uh, mm -hmm. uh, did all the uh, the animation of uh, for it, and and Tim wrote the um, wrote the script. It's uh, it's. It's, you know, bringing Lost in Space back to where they had hoped it would go. And, oh. uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, resurrecting the characters and uh, and telling more stories about about Lost and, you know, what what we what we did in the 60s, uh, using oh. those characters and our characters. And uh, yeah. And so uh, I can't t tell you much about it. I don't want to give it away. Is, but it's going to be on YouTube soon. Is it more episodical or is it like a, a more full length? It's more full length, but it'll it's 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 hard to. It, they're now like in the third, doing the third one, and okay. yeah. So you know, I'm just doing voiceover, and of course, and um, it, it's it's so much fun. I love voiceover. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't know whether you know that I studied with Gary Austin, who founded the Groundlings. And I studied oh, okay. him for years and okay. uh, improv. And I think everyone should do improv. I mean, you know, mm. everyone. And so, so my point is that in improv, you you work on voices, you work on characters. Like I do a uh, pugilist who's you know a little bit uh, you know the you know a little little over a uh, box, you know, and uh, right. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Or, you know, a child with a lift, they were, lift, but, you know, it, or, or, I mean, but you, you, you have fun. You just have fun finding these characters in yourself that you've oh. observed. Or I can do a Jonathan, you know, I do a, a female Jonathan. Oh. And, and, you know, I, it's always, it's always good to, um, to bring those out when you're, especially doing scene work and, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just, it's, it's it, and and this uh, voiceover, um, you can find all of those. So you see the character, and you go, "Oh, I could do that with that fish, or that that um, that uh, gorilla, or that you know squirrel, or whatever." Right. Yeah. Cool. So, I look forward to seeing that one. 
Yeah. Yeah. According to IMDb, the uh, writer's name is Timothy Williams. Oh, da- thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Timothy Williams and Phil Hamilton is the director. And Phil Hamilton. Thank you. Yes. Timothy Williams. All I know, I just communicate with him. It's Tim. So, you know, hey, Tim. Okay. Yeah, Timothy Williams. That's right. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> All right. Uh, Marta, we have one. F- uh, one. One more thing. He's very, very, very talented and very thoughtful. And uh, man, his his uh, his scripts are so good and filled with um, challenge, challenging uh, 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 things that have to be dealt with. And, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he's really good. He's really good. And Phil is a great animator. So, yeah, it'd be fun. All right. Cool. Cool. All right, we have one final question for you, Marta, and we like to call this our silly question. This is oh. this is yeah, this is how we get towards the conclusion. You know, it so, no, sorry. Well, <laughs> some of it, well, we have. All right, this is the final silly question. We'll put it that way. All right, so if you could be, and you could you have to choose one or the other, if you could be Batman or Robin, who would you choose and why? Oh, Batman, of course. You know, I dated Robin. Did Which not one? know that. We've interviewed Robin. Did not know that. I did. I dated him for a very brief time. And he wrote a book. Yes, he did. Autobiography. And he said that he dated a blonde who had been in a sci-fi series who chased him with an axe. With an axe. I never, uh, I never chased him with an axe. <laughs> was it a I hatchet? Him. <laughs> <laughs> it, was <an> axe. <laughs> it wasn't a full hatchet. axe. It was a hatchet. Get your story right. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was so bad. Somebody said, did you chase him with a hatchet? I said, no, an axe. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, no, 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 no. So, ah. it, yeah, yeah. I, I would, because I, Bert was nice, but Adam West was sexy. And I loved, I loved him because there's so many Batmans throughout mm-hmm. the films and throughout these years. And um, I don't know, Adam, he just had that deep voice and that sort of, you know, charisma about him that just was quiet and, and strong. And um, you know, I just, I sort of adored him. And um, uh, I would see him at I would see him at shows, and and, um, and I'd always go, oh, there he is, you know, Batman. <laughs> but, I, but they were opposite us, you know. Right. And, yeah, they were. They was. They were supposed to do. I think they started two nights a week, but we beat mm-hmm. them in the um, in the, in the ratings, so they cut that Wednesday. <laughs> night. And um, and, they, and so we had. A, we, you know, our show was good, and it was always in the in you know in the top ratings. So it was a puzzle to me why we were uh, why we were canceled. But you know, them's them's the the you know what, what happens. You know, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, no, I'm very making, good. I'm not making any sense. Cut that one out. <laughs> no, you did fine. Well, Marta, thank you so much for being on the show today. Where can our listeners go to find out more about you and your work? Well, my Facebook, you know, but I don't get and uh, I don't get online enough. I don't I don't do enough um, connecting. I just am so busy. I'm always my, like I paint. I did this painting here. I um, and I I did write a, a children's story, and I'm trying to get the illustrations done. A little painful. So emotionally painful, and I take you know, I scene study and improv, and I'm mm-hmm. always running around like crazy. And I'm up at seven in the morning and bed at like midnight, and and it's you know, get up and do it again. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> this was so much fun. It was. You're speechless. I was. I was just so <laughs> awestruck. And usually Kathleen does this next part. And, and he oh, forgot yeah. that Kathleen's not here and that he has to do it. So, <laughs> Kathleen, I hope you feel better. It's that so, time of year. Get your shots. Yep. Absolutely. Or you say in Michigan, shots. Shots. <laughs> yeah. People say you have an accent to me. And I say, no, I don't. I'm from <laughs> Michigan. How can I have an accent? 
<laughs> well, we kind of do as mis- as Midwesterners. We say water instead of water, you know. And- you say supper instead of dinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, with me, they're interchangeable. Yeah. As long as you don't and- call me late for dinner, we'll be okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we want to remind you that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to ensure that we get more amazing guests like Marta Krista here today and, and have these funny moments for you guys to be able to listen to. So please do take the time to subscribe. It helps well more than we can ever really tell you. And be sure to go check out Marta's work as well. But for whatever reason, if you are not happy with our show today, please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department. That is, of course, Robbie the Robot, who is still sour that he didn't get the full-time robot gig on Lost in Space. So send in only one copy of her complaint to this embittered robot, and Robbie will make sure that your disgust for our lack of ability will be handled in the between Comic-Con appearances and battles with the actual robot from Lost in Space. Robbie is fully equipped and ready for battle. On second thought, how about you just send your complaints to Judy Robinson? She seems nicer, nicer and less murdery is always better. No, but I wanted to say, I forgot to say, I, I'm in two movies, one called The Bachelor's Valentine, and the other is called Brenda and Oliver, and they'll be out soon. Excellent. We'll oh, look forward to those. I, I don't, I don't, my, I, I'm not a good promoter of myself, so. That's okay. We'll, we'll put those in the notes and so that everybody can find them. Okay. All right. So thanks again, Marta. We appreciate you coming on the show. It's so much fun. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, that's Thank you. That's going to conclude us for the FSF Popcast. Goodbye. Ciao. Bye. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of the FSF Popcast, we want to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, please contact us by means of Twitter or Instagram using the handle at FSF Popcast or go to www.fsfpopcast.com and click on the contact me link. Thanks again and hope you enjoyed the episode. <laughs>